Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night uh, prayer meeting. And I'm thankful that we're able to go, uh, join together again as we go through our journey through James. This is our uh, third part of this. And so I look forward to us uh, being able to worship together tonight. But before we do, uh, I do want us to remember those that are on our prayer list. Uh, first of all, I'd like to remember Brother Fred Patterson in prayer. Brother Fred will be going uh, tomorrow morning uh, to the to the hospital and he'll be having a heart cath and uh, they they have seen some abnormality on the back of his heart and so uh, they'll be going in to take a look at that and they don't know what they're going to have to do yet so be in prayer for brother fred and, and miss k as well be lifting them up in prayer uh, i did get word that uh, one of my my good friends that we've been praying for for uh, the last several weeks miss myrna McElfresh, she had an aneurysm on Easter Sunday. Uh, she has recuperated from the one that uh, they had fixed, but they found another one. And so today she went in for surgery for that. Uh, she did very well during her surgery. And so uh, she is in recovery. And we just ask for your continued prayers for her as she is able to recuperate from that one as well. Uh, she's hoping to be able to go home tomorrow. Uh, they're still, they've got a long way to go in, in her recovery, so I, I do appreciate your prayers for Myrna. Uh, be lifting up Donnie Black in prayer. Donnie uh, is having surgery at Vanderbilt uh, right now, from what I understand, so be lifting him up in prayer. And also be praying for uh, Jackson Igo as well as he uh, is continuing to recuperate. Uh, we have many others. I know that you've you've probably got many on your heart tonight, and I know I do as well. And those unspoken requests, as as well as those that uh, that we've mentioned, uh, we would appreciate your prayers. Brian Thompson, I'll be heading to Memphis on Friday to deliver the food to St. Jude and uh, some of the money. And uh, praise the Lord, we were able to raise a little over four hundred dollars for St. Jude for their, being able to take care of the kids there. Uh, at the Ronald McDonald House, those St. Jude kids and families. And so I know they really appreciate it. And we also appreciate uh, the donation of ice cream that we're going to be able to take as well. Uh, uh, Brother Curtis Moore has allowed me to borrow his freezer. And so we'll be able to go and take those to uh, to St. Jude, all the ice cream uh, that, that was donated. So we'll be able to take that as well. I uh, appreciate uh, those that have been a part of that. And uh, it's it's a blessing to be able to take that. That's one of the things that... Um, that um, the lady from the Ronald McDonald House told me if there was one thing they were deficient in, it was dessert. And so that's a blessing. And uh, the way they've described it is just a God send to them. So we're thankful that the Lord provided. And I know that you've got many prayer requests as, uh, on your heart as well. So let's go to the Lord and word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this evening that we're able to join together. Lord, it's my prayer that you just may speak to our hearts and lives and bless us. Father, we're so thankful and grateful that we had the opportunity Sunday to be able to join together and worship. Lord, I just, I'm so thankful for my church family. And Lord, even though it looks a little different right now, we know that there'll be a day when you bring healing and we'll be able to join together again uh, as, a, as a church family in the same service and be able to worship. God, it's my prayer that you just might encourage our hearts and lives, especially during this time. Lead us and direct us, and Father, that we may be faithful to give you the glory and honor that you deserve. Thank you for all that you do and the way you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. And so tonight we're uh, going to be in the part three of our journey through James. And um, that the scripture we'll look at is still in James chapter one. We're going to be in verses 12 through 18 tonight, uh, verses 12 through 18, uh, James chapter one, where the Bible says here in James chapter one, verse 12 through 18, scripture here says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. When the Lord hath promised to them that love him, which the Lord has promised to them that love him, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will beget he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creation of his creatures. So we see out of this passage of scripture here in James chapter one, twelve through eighteen, uh, again about temptation. Now, as I've said in, in previous uh, the Bible study, is the sin is not in 
the temptation itself. The sin is when we yield to temptation. Uh, the scripture even tells us that, that Christ was tempted, uh, that temptation is not the sin, but where the sin happens and where the sin comes in is when we yield to that. And so this pastor scripture deals with the enduring of temptation. And so that it starts out, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Now, the scripture here doesn't, it's not saying blessed are you when you are tempted, but when we get to the other side of that temptation, when we, we stand strong in our faith, and this is where the blessing comes out of that, that we've been able to stand strong in, in our faith in the Lord and not yield to the temptation. So we've not sinned even though we've been tempted. Uh, the Bible says that when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. So there's, there's three different parts of temptation we're going to look at tonight. And the first is that enduring. And the Bible here speaks of the trying times. And, and I believe every single one of us can, can understand that aspect, that there are trying times in life. Uh, we have been tried in, in several different instances. I know uh, there's been times where it just seems like everything that, that goes on in life uh, has turned out in a negative light. Uh, there was one in particular day. This all happened in one day. Uh, I told Crystal, I said, well, I'm, I'm going to mow the yard. Um, I, I either had to mow it or, or bale it. I couldn't decide. It was it was getting to the point where if I didn't mow it that day, I, I was going to need a bush hog because it was getting thick and I just had to get it, I had to get it mowed. And so I went and I got my mower and my mower wouldn't start. So I get my Jeep. I had an old Jeep at the time. I drove my Jeep up to where my lawnmower was. I jumped it off, brought my Jeep back down. The lawnmower's running. I get on the lawnmower. I start mowing. The grass is so thick in one portion of the yard. And I was really careful as I was, was mowing not to go too fast and not to bog it down. But there was one area where um, I got just going a little too fast. And when I did, sure enough, it bogged the mower down. The mower quit. So I go get my Jeep and I pull up and I jump it off again because it won't start. As I'm... I drive my Jeep back and park it back where it was. And as I'm starting to uh, to make that little curve there, lo and behold, I realize that my back wheel is about to fall off. And, and I look at it, I get off the mower, and sure enough, I'm missing three of the four lug nuts to hold it on. So I have to shut the mower off again. And as I um, I go, I, I thought, well, I'll, I'll take... Um, take it to the, the shop. And so I called the guy at the shop. Um, I told him I was tired of fooling with it. I wanted him to fix it. He said, okay. So I get the mower. I went up to my father-in-law's with my Jeep, got my mower and put it on the trailer. As I'm taking the trailer up to the Jeep, uh, with the Jeep, up uh, the mower up to the, the shop to get it re repaired, uh, I pull it in. And as soon as I get there, I realize that my brakes are failing on my Jeep. I get the uh, mower off. The guy said, well, I'll call you when I'm done. And so I said, okay, that sounds great. I start heading home and I call my father-in-law and I say, listen, the brakes are going out on my Jeep. And, and the Jeep was really old anyway. And um, he said, see if you can get it here and just kind of nurse it along. So I get it back to his house. And uh, sure enough, the master cylinder has gone out. And to get that Jeep worked on at uh, that time, uh, it was several years old. Um, he just told me, he said, I think it'd probably be better to just take it to the scrapyard if you can get it there. So uh, I drop his trailer off and he and I run to the scrapyard. I sell the Jeep to the, the scrap guy because I mean, it, there was more than just one problem with it. And so we get back home. This is all in one day. And as I get to the house, Crystal tells me, she said, our air condition's out. So I call an air condition guy that I was friends with and, uh, uh, he came and he looked at it and he said, you're going to have to have a new air conditioner. And so I'm thinking, good gracious, you know, of all the things that, that could happen. And so um, I, I told Chris, I come in, I ate some lunch. And about that time, the phone rings. And it's the guy that um, that is um, working on my mower. And he said, hey, he said, I got your mower fixed. Come and get it. It's ready to go. And I said, you've already got it fixed? He said, yeah, I got it. But don't worry. Everything's good. So I said, okay. So uh, of course, I don't have a Jeep to go and, and pick it up anymore. So I call up one of my, my deacons. He just got him a brand new truck. And I said, hey, are you in town? And he said, no, I'm not working today. And I told him what I needed. He said, well, my trailer's hooked up to my truck. He said, 
just come and get it and go get your mower. So I did. I pulled up, got my mower. He drove it. The guy just drove it right on that trailer. I take it to the house. And as I'm about to unload it, I'm backing up to where the hill is. And his his uh, trailer digs into the, the hill and shoots sideways. And it puts a big old dent in the side of his brand new truck. And so I'm tore all to pieces about that. I pull the mower off. I, I finally get it off. I take his truck home and explain what's happened to him. Um, he says, don't worry about it. And, uh, you know, we'll take it and get it fixed. I get home finally and I get on the mower. I start out across the yard and I'll be if it doesn't stop and die and it won't start again. And so I wound up having to bring Crystal's car up to jump it. And uh, I finally just got it all to the point where I was so aggravated and so upset. I finally just pull it back into the barn um, and shut it off. I thought I've, I've got to quit because everything that's gone on today has been horrible. Everything has happened. I walk in the door and the phone rings. And at that time we had still owned that house in Louisiana. And the man that was living in my house that we had in Louisiana called to tell me the air conditioner was out in my brand new house that we had built there. And so over the span of one day, it was one thing after another, after another, after another. And I told Crystal, it seems like I just can't win today. It, it seems like one of those days where where the wheels fall off literally on my mower. Uh, but it, it was everything was going wrong and everything was going to the point and you just wanted to quit. You just wanted to give up. This is a trying time of faith. And it wasn't until I just stepped back and 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 then I started laughing. I couldn't help but laugh because um, you'd either laugh or cry, I guess. But but I had to laugh because I'm thinking of all of the days. This is just uh, one of those hard days that that the devil does everything he can to try to discourage you. And and it was a day that I was I should have been celebrating because uh, I had a daughter that had had cancer and she is in remission and she's doing great. And the Lord blessed us with a home and I had a vehicle and. There were so many great things I could have said, Lord, thank you for. But instead, I was looking so many times at the negative things that were going on instead of looking at the positive. And so for us, that there, we're really tempted a lot of times to look at how negative things are and how negative the world is. So the Bible tells us that once we endure the temptation and we don't fall short and start sin and, and, and allow that to lead us into a sinful situation, that then we can see the blessing out of that. And we're able to share with others, as bad as this is, uh, this is as bad as it'll ever be for me. If this is the worst day of my life, everything's looking up from here because I've got heaven waiting on me. And, and as, as, as bad as things here on this earth, this is as bad as it's ever going to be. And, and it also leads us to that same thought that if you don't have Jesus, this old terrible world and everything that's going on in it is as good as anything's going to be. It's never going to get any better than this. And so that we have that, that thought as a Christian to understand that, that Christ lives in our heart and in our life, and we can endure those hard times, and we can endure those times of, of temptations, those times of trials in our life. Because when we endure, the Bible says we that he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that loved him. That there's a promise of the Lord that goes along with this, that we never give up and that we never give in, that we continue to follow after our Lord, that we continue to trust in him, that we continue to look to him, the author and the finisher of our faith, because he's not finished with us yet. There are things for us to, to have accomplished in his name. He's got great things in store for our life, but we can't give up. But when we start to give up and when we start to fall away in those difficult times, and I hate to say it this way, but there's always somebody that's watching our life during the hard times to see how you and I are going to deal with those, those things. Because the Bible doesn't say that once we become a Christian that our road turns to lilacs and lollipops. The scripture doesn't say that, that, you know, it'll be rainbows every day. The Bible does tell us, though, that, that we will suffer persecution and we will have hard times so that you and I can get that thought in our life that everybody has them, those difficult days. And when we're having a difficult day to know that somebody's always watching to see how we're going to handle it. And if we're going to continue to stay faithful in our life, 
Crystal and I had a man that that attended church up in northern Kentucky when I pastored there. And, and one day um, after we had had buried our son, uh, he was still born. And after we had had buried our son, um, it was a hard time, but we continued to serve our Lord. And so what we we were just able to praise God for what he had done in our life and the blessing of of knowing where our son was already, that he was in heaven waiting on us. And, and as, as we, we lived that, and it was difficult, and, and there's a lot of things in, in life I, I can't tell you I understand, but I can tell you this much, that there comes a point in faith where you don't have to understand. All you have to do is say, yes, Lord. And, and so that's what Chris and I, I did. And so this man, several months after, after Caleb had died, he called me up one night and he said, I just want to know something. And I said, okay, uh, he, I really like this guy. He had attended uh, for several weeks and he said, how, how are you, you able to get through what you've gone through? He said, cause I'm not going to lie. I watch to see if, if what you have been saying from the pulpit is you've been living in your life. And if it was true to you and he said, and, and it looks like it is. How are you getting through these hard times? He had been through a difficult time in his life. His wife had left him, left him with two small children. And um, he had had, had terrible, uh, just a terrible time. And, and to be able to share the gospel and to see um, what the Lord did in his life and, and to see that uh, his son, and, and I was privileged to baptize his son and his daughter. And, and then not too long after that, I was able to, uh, to, to be blessed to... Uh, to conduct a wedding of him and his his wife that had left him, that the Lord dealt with her heart and the Lord dealt with his heart and brought them back to him. And so it was a, a victory for the Lord is what it was. And and I have to say it's only because of, of Jesus, and this is what I told him, it's only because of Jesus living in my heart that I could ever hope to have any hope of eternity, to be able to see my son, to be able to see my dad that had already passed away, to be able to know in my life that one day I will see them again and to be able to get through the difficult times because when I am weak that's when he is strong if I would just allow him to move in my life and so the the Bible talks about first of all this this temptation enduring temptation the second aspect that the scripture here deals with temptation is, is identifying it and calling it what it is now the temptation that the Bible says here but when we are tempted, let no man say, when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. That we can identify who's doing the tempting. Uh, it's not God that does tempting. God does not tempt us to sin because God does not, uh, he is, has no uh, temptation of evil. And so it's, it's not of God because he cannot be tempted. Uh, and that's such a, a, a thought that's so, it's alien to us because uh, our hearts are not are geared, geared that way because we are we are selfish creatures when it comes down to it. Uh, no one has to teach us selfishness. Selfishness is what we are born with. Uh, that is that that sinful desire. Uh, we want what we want when we want it, and, and that's that's how sin works in our life, and that's how it is in in our world. Uh, and and we don't. And just to share how I can prove that is you don't have to teach a baby to cry when they don't get what they want. A baby just does that. Uh, if a baby's hungry, it's going to cry. If it wants to be changed, it's going to cry. Uh, a baby's going to cry because they want their needs met right away. Now, as we mature, the hope is that we, we grow out of that. And too many in our world haven't grown out of that. Um, they're, they're they're, they're living in a selfish world where everything revolves around them and, and what they want, unfortunately. And, and so this, uh, this, this selfishness is, is part of, of, of who we have, have become, especially as a society. The temptation is identified here that we are, are tempted, but temptation is not of God because he never tempts anyone. And, and the scripture here identifies this as uh, we are falling to our own lusts, is how the scripture says it, that we're being led astray. We're drawn away by our own lusts. Uh, Crystal and I were out shopping one day, and, and I'm not a big fan of shopping. I, I didn't like to go to the mall, but that's one of the places that she liked to go. And so I would take her to the mall every once in a while That when she'd say, hey, this is a got on sale. Let's go look at it. And so we'd go to the mall. 
And one day as I, we're walking through the mall and I, I can't remember exactly what, what store it is, but I remember looking up on the wall and there was this great big huge sign and the sign read, just do what makes you happy. And that was the sign. Just do what makes you happy. Don't take into account anyone else. Don't take into account anyone else's thoughts or feelings. It's basically what the sign's saying. You look out for number one. You look out for yourself. Don't worry about anybody else. And that's really the, the thought of, of our world. Uh, they're, they're only looking out after their self. And so they're being led away by their own lust. They're drawn away from what the truth is because of, of their own desires. They don't want to hear the truth. They want to hear what uh, the Bible says, in the, as Paul tells Timothy, that there'll be those that will bring teachers that that'll, they have itching ears. They won't endure the truth. They, they, they want to heap praise upon themselves. And so this is where, uh, where our world is. And there's a progression of sin, uh, the progression of temptation. That, that once we, the scripture identifies it here, that it lists it, that, that from our lust, as that we fall to that temptation, we're being drawn away in our own lust, that lust takes us to sin. And, and that's when we, we choose to do wrong over doing right, where we, we make that willful choice to, to do exactly what God says not to. We, we yield to that temptation. And then the Bible says, then that, that sin leads us to death. And so there is a, a progression of what sin is. Uh, and that's how the Bible says, uh, when he's drawn away with his own lust, he's enticed. Then when lust, lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin conceives, and when it is finished, it brings forth death. And so we see that not only just a, a fleshly death on this in this old life, but also an eternal death is how the Bible's speaking of it here. An eternal separation from God, a second death, is how the Bible tells us that, that those that are not found written in the book of life in Revelation chapter 20 are cast into the, uh, the sea of fire, that, um, that that'll be a, a second death. And the scripture calls it that. This is the second death. Um, so that the temptation of that, the, the three aspects, the enduring of temptation, and where te temptation is identified. And then the last one is when temptation is resisted. Now, the Bible says here, uh, as you look there, do not err, my beloved brethren, every good and, and every perfect gift, gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variables, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will he begat us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creature. So the, the Bible tells us that, that we should be careful in our thoughts and in our minds. Do not err is how it says it. To, to have this understanding, uh, that, an understanding that, uh, that we see exactly what temptation is. Um, so I, when I went to the doctor not too long ago, uh, one of the things that the first thing that they asked me to do, uh, they didn't take my temperature. They didn't do anything. I walked in the little room and the lady looked at me and she said, get on the scale. Well, I didn't come for that. You know, I, I, I didn't want to have my weight taken because that, that wasn't what I was there to see the doctor about. But guess what? That's what she wanted to do. She wanted to take my weight. Um, and you know what? There comes a point in time when, when you're on those scales that, that you really can't lie anymore. And, and the times that you chose a, 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 a piece of chocolate pie instead of an apple comes back to your mind because you have that understanding. You know that, that sooner or later you're going to be found out. And so when you get up on those scales, um, it doesn't matter how, how big of clothes you have bought to make you look slimmer. When you get up on the scales, it really tells the truth. And so this is a point where God is telling us there is a truth. Do not err. There's a truth here that we have to, to grasp and that we have to, to take to our own heart and in our own life. That God is not the one that, that is the tempter. God is the one that is the giver 
Uh, that's who God is. That's that's what God has done throughout all ages, is he is the one that is the giver. He is the one that gave his only begotten son to die on a cross for your sins and for mine. He's the one that gives us the opportunity to have hope. He's the one that gives us and offers us eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He's the one that gives us peace. He's the one that that gives us a, a, a clean spirit and a, and a clean life and takes away our sin because of the sacrifice of Christ. You see, God is, is not the tempter. God is the giver. And he gives us an opportunity to live for him. And he gives us a, a great plan for our life that you and I can follow after him in all things. And the Bible says that there is no turning with him, that there is no kind of turning with our, our God, that there's no difference in today than there was yesterday. When I was a pastor at a, at a church, we were having a, a deacon's meeting and, and we'd had a, a little problem with with a youth minister and and so we're we're talking to him and, and we're trying to we're trying to encourage him more than anything because the young man was uh, he he wasn't that he he wasn't uh, he was kind of a new christian and uh, a former pastor had had brought him on and the pastor had left and so as 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 I come on staff there he's uh, he's on staff already and and I'm trying to help him and I'm trying to encourage him and and as as we're talking with him one day in a deacons meeting um, one of the things that he said will always stick out in my mind. He told me, he said, and he told the whole body of deacons, he said, the things that were wrong 20 years ago are not wrong today. And, and it, it goes against, and, and I'm, I'm sorry to say, but this, this is the way a lot of, of young people think, unfortunately, that the things that were wrong 20 years ago aren't wrong today. Well, you got to get with the times is what they say, but this is not true. Uh, our Lord is the same today as he was yesterday, as he will be tomorrow. That, that when we see that there is no turning, there's no difference from our God, he is the same God. He is the same God that expects you and from me to, to be faithful. He's the same God who, who called and said, be ye holy for God is holy. He's the same God who has the same expectations of us to live faithful lives as he did the disciples. And so for us to have that grasp and that knowledge that, that our God doesn't want us to, to believe a lie, he doesn't want us to err. What he wants is for us to understand that truth and to take that truth into our heart and our life and to live it and to, to make a difference in the world where we live because our world is is living a lie uh, they have bought into people who have lied to them and, and told them how how great they are and and there are ministers that'll tell them hey listen everything's going to be okay uh, god won't send you to hell and i i have to say that part i believe is true i don't believe god sends anyone to hell but i believe they would choose hell when they would when they would uh, reject Jesus as their Savior, that's when when I see that uh, there's there's people that are lying to others. They won't tell them the truth, and the truth is, without Jesus Christ as your Savior, and Lord, that things won't be okay. That there's an eternity of separation that happens, and for us to have that grasp and that knowledge in our life that our God has a great expectation for us to whom much is given, much is expected. And I think for every one of us who have experienced Christ as a Savior and Lord, we've been given much. And because we have been given what we've been given, salvation through Christ and a new life in Him, that God has a lot to expect from us. And so this part of this journey through James is where God is calling us to get this in our heart and get this in our mind that we've been blessed and that we're not to fall to temptation, but we're to endure temptation because as we endure it, we're able to give him the glory and honor. And then we are a witness to those who are around us, for those uh, that need Jesus, those that would look to our lives uh, and to see him in our heart and as we live it in our life. And so I encourage you tonight, as the Lord speaks to you in your heart and in your life, that you live for Christ. Be that encouragement to others that need him, to be that one that, that prays, to be that one that encourages, that the Lord gets the glory and honor for our life in the way that we live. 
I look forward to seeing you Sunday. Don't forget about Sunday morning. We'll have our uh, 50 years old and over uh, service at 930. And then at 11 o'clock, anyone under the age of 50 would be welcome there in our, our second service So uh, at 11 o'clock. So come and join us as we are able to worship our Lord together. I look forward to seeing you then. May the Lord bless you with a great night.